What's going on guys? Mike back again with another World of Warcraft video and today we're going to be going into our rotation slash priority list slash add-on usage slash macro slash tips etc etc stuff like that. Um, I'm going to keep it rather I don't want to say simple because it's not really going to be super simple but I'm not going to be going over every single spell and what it does because I feel like I've if you're looking to play in hand, so all you really have to do is read the spells, and that's about it. And you'll kind of get a gist for it once you hear about the rotation and everything. Um, and stuff like that. So, figure let's just jump right into it. It's going to be a fairly long video. Uh, the first thing we're going to start off with is going to be our buffs. Um, in hand shamans have buffs that aren't particularly buffs for... It's not like a, a fortitude buff for a priest. It's more of self buffs and weapon imbues and stuff like that. Um, so, the first thing is going to be Lightning Shield. This is the first core of an Enhanced Shaman. This is going to have your static procs, uh, your static shield procs, etc, etc. So, keep that on. It's the only shield you're going to be using. Don't worry about any other shields. Lightning Shield. Beautiful. Next up here is going to be our Weapon Imbues. Um, weapon Imbues, since we have two weapons, since we are dual wielding, we are going to have one for our main hand and one for our off hand. Um, it does matter which Imbue you put on which weapon um, d for DPS reasons. Uh, main hand is going to be Wind Fury, and off hand is going to be Flame Tongue. Um, that's how it's always going to be. Uh, don't worry about Rock Biter. Don't worry about Frost Brand, and I believe that's all the ones that. So, Wind Fury, main hand, Flame Tongue, off hand. Uh, you can make a macro for it in case you get confused. Um, I don't necessarily know it off the top of my head because I don't use it, um, but you can. It's like slash cast. Uh, Wind Fury weapon, and then you have to put in brackets, main hand, and slash off hand, stuff like that. I don't know. You can just Google it really quick if you were that interested in it. Um, also, the orientation of your weapons does matter. Higher DPS weapon or higher damage top end, as this top end is 8236, um, that's going to go in your main hand. Uh, for me, it doesn't really matter because they're both identical. I just went with the axe in my main hand. Again, no, it doesn't really matter since they both are identical. Great. Um, so that is going to be our self buffs and just a little bit about their weapons. Um, now we're going to get into the bulk of the rotation and the bulk of the priority list. And I should probably just emphasize priority list because that is what it is. Um, you don't have a set rotation like other classes like, you know, Frostbolt, 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 or Arcane, Arcane Missiles, Arcane Missiles, stuff like that. You don't have that. Um, you're always using all of your abilities, and you're only really using them when it's time for them to pop up, or you get a certain proc, etc., etc. Um, so, to start off, the first thing that is the most important is going to be your Searing Totem or your Fire Elemental Totem. Your Fire Elemental Totem, you have to remember, is on a five minute cooldown, so you're going to pop this when you're doing all your. when you're pretty much popping all your other cooldowns. Uh, it's a great DPS increase. Uh, once every five minutes, so that's pretty much going to go in conjunction with your Stormlash Totem or whenever else you want to pop it, mostly during Bloodlust or at the beginning of a fight is when everyone generally pops all their cooldowns to have them up multiple times during the fight, which I do suggest. And the reason you're going to keep one of these two Totems up, or pretty much Searing, t searing Totem is the Totem you're going to keep up since there's no cooldown and you can summon it however many times you'd like. Uh, the reason you're going to summon this is because... It gives you the buff of Searing Flames, which I went into last time, so I'm not going to go into it again. But Searing Flames is what gets consumed by your Lava Lash, which makes your Lava Lash crit for 150k+. plus. Um, that is what you're going to be doing with it. So Searing Totem is going to be up 100% of the time, unless, of course, Fire Elemental Totem is up. Wonderful. Next up on the list is going to be Flame Shock. Flame Shock is the debuff or the shock that you have to make sure your target has 100% of the time. Uh... It has a cool. It has a duration of 25 seconds, I believe, or 23 seconds. I don't know. What is it? Just around 25 seconds. Um, so that is what it has. But so, excuse me. So it has a duration of 25 seconds and a six-second cooldown, which means it should be up 100% of the time. Uh, you should be casting it either right before it ends or at the four-second mark, somewhere around there. The reason it's going to be a little awkward on when you're going to cast it is because you're only going to be using Flame Shock after you use an Unleashed Elements. Unleashed Elements is going to buff the next fire ability that you use. In this case, it is going to be our Flame Shock. It is going to consume. Excuse me, it is going to consume that buff, and your Flame Shock is now going to tick harder than it normally would. So, 
Now, the reason it's a little tricky is because Unleash Elements has a 15 second cooldown, which, if you wait to do it twice, uh, you know, use two Unleashed Elements without a Flame Shock, you're not going to have your Flame Shock being buffed, which ultimately means lower DPS. So, generally, what you want to do is you want to Unleash Elements, then you want to Flame Shock, then you want to go through your normal rotation, blah, blah, blah. Let's just say I'm not going to hit anything yet because I haven't really talked about it yet. But then you're going to Earth Shock. So, after you're Earth Shocking, then you're going to keep going, blah, 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 blah. These are pretty much your shock order list. Now at that point, if you noticed, your shock cooldown came off as soon as Unleash Elements came up, which means you're going to Unleash Elements and you're going to Flame Shock again. Um, as you go on, you'll get accustomed to when you're going to Flame Shock. You can get it at lower numbers if you wait a certain amount of time. Um, you didn't necessarily have to you know, wait that much longer if you didn't want to. Depending on when you use it and depending on the situation, sometimes you will apply your Unleash Elements Flame Shock a little later on in the fight. Um, let's say when there's like four seconds left or three seconds left, somewhere around there. Um, the main goal is to not let your flame shock fall off the target because then it's going to be a DPS loss. Um, so I'm also going to be doing this a lot during uh, the priority rotation list thing. I'm going to be repeating everything I said just so it gets burned into your brain. And I'll also put it in the description below, um, just a little mock-up list for you. Um, so again, first up is going to be your Searing Totem or Fire Elemental Totem. Second is going to be an Unleash Elements Flame Shock. 100% of the time. Those are the two buffs, or the two debuffs on your target that will be up 100% of the time. Wonderful. Next up on the list is going to be Storm Strike. Storm Strike is your big ability. Um, it deals crazy amount of damage since it hits with bull weapons on a low cooldown of 8 seconds and increases all your nature spells by 20... Uh, excuse me, increases the chance to be critically struck by your nature spells by 25%, which pretty much gives you a 25% increased crit chance on most of your abilities, which our main one here being Lightning Bolt. Nothing much to say about that, except Storm Strike, that's Storm Strike. Uh, after Storm Strike, we're going to be worried about Lava Lash here. Except, Lava Lash is only going to be used when you have a 5 stack of Searing Flames on your target. Um, I know I've said 3 to 5 stacks, Mostly it's going to be 5 stacks. I say 3 stacks in the beginning because that it, you generally run through all of your abilities. Then that's when uh, you're going to start to get back into the rotation of your Lava Lash being up every 5 stacks. Um, as you can see here, I have 5 stacks up here. And also the add-on that I'm using to track this is called Power Auras. Um, if you'd like, it's just Power Auras. I probably will forget to put it into the description, but if I don't, it'll be there. Uh, to open it, you type uh, backslash power, P-O-W-A. Um, you're going to click on New. I'm just going to click on Edit because I already made one. And from here, this is where you're going to edit the add-on. Um, let's go back to Activation here. This is going to be the first screen. You can choose the icon you want, the color it, the opacity, the location of it, etc., etc. The main thing that you need to make sure you put in is that Activation by Buff is selected. However many stacks you want it to be selected by, either a set number or mine, as you can see here, is 325. I could do greater than 3, however you'd like it. And you want to make sure that Searing Flames is typed in. These little uh, selections here you can mess around with, you know, however you'd like it to show. And next up, the next important part, if you want, is to show the stacks, how many you actually have on the target. Uh, let's just summon another one here. Um, I'm going to Flame Shock. Okay. Um, this is it's very simple. You could just choose the size of where you want it, the position, uh, all down here, and the color of it, etc., etc., whatever you'd like. Um, that is when it's all said and done, that is how you are going to see your ability as it's shown right here. This is my Searing Flames, and this just has the stacks number next to it. I just like it just because it's a nice visual showcase of how many are actually on there, just so you don't have to either look at your buff all the way at the top, you know, it can be a little small. It's just an easier way of noticing. Okay, so to recap, again, we're going to start, our first ability here is going to be our Searing Totem or our Fire Elemental Totem followed by an Unleashed Elements Flame Shock, which is then followed by a Storm Strike, which is then followed by a Lava Lash at five stacks of Searing Flames. Now, this is where it's going to start to get a little tricky, our rotation or priority list. Priority list is what I'm going to call it. Next up on the list is going to be your Lightning Bolt. However, you're only going to use Lightning Bolt when you are five stack of Maelstrom Weapon. Let's see if I can maintain that. Okay, beautiful. Five stack of Maelstrom Weapon. You get a Maelstrom Weapon... Every time you hit, every time you attack your target, you have a chance uh, to gain Maelstrom Weapon, which reduces your chance to cast an ability, any nature ability, with a cooldown or a cast time of 10 seconds or less by 100, uh, 
So the cast time by 100 by 20 percent, excuse me, and the mana cost by 20 percent, uh, which ultimately means when you have five stacks, you are essentially casting a free ability, costs no mana, and it has no cast time. It'll be instant cast. Um, again, you're only going to use this when you have five stacks because it's going to be an instant cast. And why would you not want to cast an instant cast ability? Um, it's just smart like that. <laughs> um, so that is when you're going to use that. So remember, Lightning Bolt only when you have five stacks of Maelstrom Weapon. As you can see, you gain Maelstrom Weapon quite a lot, especially through your abilities. You know, As you're spamming, you have a chance to pretty much get it on every single ability you throw because you'll be melee swinging quite a lot. So that is how that is going to work. So let's just repeat the basics one more time. It's going to be Searing Totem or Fire Elemental Totem. Then it's going to be an Unleashed Elements Flame Shock. Then it's going to be a Storm Strike. And then it's going to be a Lava Lash at five stacks of Searing Flames. And finally, it's going to be a five-stacked Maelstrom of Lightning Bolt. That is essentially the basis that you want to follow. Now we're going to get into a little bit of where it can get a little confusing and a little jumbled because this is where your proc rates and everything matter on what you're going to be casting. So I mentioned Earthshock earlier. Earthshock you're only going to be using when either Flameshock was just renewed, Unleashed Elements is on cooldown and you don't need to renew Flameshock with it, or you have literally nothing to cast because you will find out that sometimes you will have nothing to cast. That is when you're going to use Flameshock or when you're going to use Fire Nova. Both when you have nothing to cast as filler abilities just to increase your DPS by a little bit. Um, even though we're a shock, it hits hard. <laughs> it hits very hard, especially if you get an echo of it. So that is the only time I want you to worry about those two abilities. They're not set into your rotation. They're just set when you don't have a shock to cast because Flame Shock is brand new. Or it doesn't need to be refreshed. Now, now is comes the time of when we're going to use certain abilities. Um, really quick here, I'm just going to go through a general, I guess, rotation here and show you how I am going to be out of abilities to cast rather quickly. Right now here I'm waiting. So right here I'm waiting. So as you see, there are going to be a lot of times where you are going to be waiting for your abilities. Um, let's just pick right here for a good moment, even though I just hit five stacks. Pretend that stopped right there. I wish I could stop it here in XSplit, but I did not. Um, so... As you can see, there are a lot of pauses in your rotations and when you're going to be using stuff. Now, you don't just want to... E excuse me, strike that. You, It's good for you to just sit there and melee because most of your damage is going to come through your melee swings. As you're going to notice, you are going to be hitting pretty hard. And when you check the DPS meters, your melee swings are going to be quite a lot of your damage. It, I believe it's in the top three. Excuse me, that makes up your total damage. However, instead of just sitting there and wasting stacks or you know, not being able to cast stuff... You have to use smarts on when you're going to use a certain ability. For instance, hear me out. Lightning Bolt. Instant cast Lightning Bolt. You always want to cast it at 5 stacks. Unless you either A, have been really unlucky and haven't been getting enough procs. Or B, you're sitting at a 4 stack on Lightning, on lightning Bolt. So 4 stacks of Maelstrom Weapon. Pretend this last one's not here. And you have a Storm Strike on just about to come off cooldown. Now, instead of waiting for your Storm Strike to come off cooldown and using it in order to gain that fifth stack, because Storm Strike will almost always give you a Maelstrom proc, in my opinion, or in the testing I've done, it's better to use your Lightning Bolt with a four stack of Maelstrom weapon rather than using your Storm Strike than using a full five stack instant cast of Maelstrom weapon. Now, the reason I say this is because Maelstrom weapon, uh, excuse me, is because Storm Strike has a chance of giving you two procs of Maelstrom. So if you're sitting on four and you Storm Strike, for all you know, you could have gotten two procs of Maelstrom weapon, but one is now wasted and you are now stuck with five. Instead, you're going to use that 0.3 second or however short the cast time is when you're sitting at four stacks. Let's see if I can just get the four stacks really quick. Uh, it's going to be three, four. Beautiful. So now you're going to cast your 0.4 second lightning bolt, which is like that. It's essentially almost an instant cast. And on top of that, when you do your next storm strike, you're going to look at that. My next storm strike, I just got three procs. So that is what I'm saying. You, you're going to be using lightning bolt when you have, when your storm strike is still on cooldown, roughly about two seconds. And you have three to four, three or four stacks of maelstrom weapon just to 
just to fill your rotation with something and to increase your DPS slightly. Because it will increase your DPS because you'll be hitting with a spell that you're essentially not even interrupting with your melee swings because during that cast time, the game kind of bugs and you can actually melee swing while you're casting that less than one second lightning bolt. So that is how you're going to manage your Maelstrom weapon procs. Now, you're going to come to a time while you're DPSing. Let me just get it there. Oh, I should not have Storm Strike. Uh, Lava Lash. You're going to get to a point in time where you're going to have five stacks of Maelstrom weapon and five stacks of Lava Lash with your Storm Strike off cooldown and your Lava Lash off cooldown and your, I guess, Lightning Bolt off cooldown, even though it's always off cooldown. Now, this comes a time, what ability do you use first? In my opinion, it's very, very difficult to judge. Mainly because, A, if you use your Lightning Bolt, let, let me just, if you use your Lightning Bolt, you can now rebuild Storm Strike, uh, Lava, uh, Searing Flames stacks with, excuse me, I lied. Strike that, let's start that over. If you use your Lightning Bolt, you can now generate Maelstrom procs based off of your melee swings and your other abilities. However, your Searing Totem, Searing Flames are now being wasted because you're sitting at 5 stacks and you can't go greater than that. Conversely, if you use your, searing f your Lava Lash to consume your 5 stacks of Searing Flames, you are now missing opportunities to gain Maelstrom stacks where Lightning Bolt is a huge part of your DPS, as is Lava Lash. So, it, it's very difficult to know when to use something. Um, generally, what I would do, I would probably use my Lightning Bolt and then my Searing Flames, or, excuse me, use my Lightning Bolt and then my Lava Lash into then my Storm Strike, just to keep everything rolling, and just based on cooldowns of, you know, Lava Lash and Storm Strike. Excuse me. Uh, your totem, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, because Lava Lash has a longer cooldown, I often find at times, to use, I find it better to use it earlier than later. That way it gets off cooldown roughly the same time as your Storm Strike comes off cooldown, which ultimately, which ultimately means more Lava Lashes. Um, so as you can tell, it's, it's very, it's very proc based and very RNG based on how fast you're building Maelstrom procs, how fast you know, how how fast, uh, or how lucky you get with crits, or with your cooldowns, when they're popping up, when the pop stuff. it It's very, very dependent on chance, and there's not much you can do. You'll find yourself sometimes sitting there swinging for, I don't know, four or five seconds, and you're still not getting any Maelstrom procs just because you're being extremely unlucky, even though the chance is fairly high. So, you're really going to have to play with the rotation. It really... It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little difficult at first because there is a lot to pay attention to. But just practice it. Sit at a dummy like I'm doing and just go over it. So, I mean, I'll recap it again really quick. It's going to be Searing Totem or Fire Elemental Totem. It's going to be an Unleashed Elements Flame Shock. Then we're going to move into Storm Strike to put our buff on them. Then we're going to move into a Lava Lash. Then we're going to move into our Lightning Bolt. Now, or, as you just saw, I built five charges of... Maelstrom before I even got to my Lava Lash. At that point, you're going to Lightning Bolt, and then you're going to Lava Lash, or you're even going to Lightning Bolt into an Earth Shock, wait for your five stacks, and then Lava Lash to consume them. So that is generally the consensus, or that is generally the rotation. Searing Totem, Unleash Elements, Flame Shock, Storm Strike, Lava Lash, Lightning Bolt, and then Earth Shock and Fire Nova as fillers, and you can use Unleash Elements... You're going to use one Unleash Elements without a Flame Shock every time. So it's going to be Unleash Elements, Flame Shock, Unleash Elements, Earth Shock. Unleash Elements, Flame Shock, Unleash Elements, Earth Shock. You get the gist. Um, you're not going to be using Unleash Elements with a Flame Shock every single time. Now, quickly, we're just going to go over... Excuse me. We're going to go over our uh, cooldowns, our DPS cooldowns. First, we have Ascendance. Huge DPS increase. Pretty much gives you ranged attack. So with pure nature damage, you, you'll hit 100k DPS no problem when you pop this. Uh, you're going to be popping Ascendance, Stormlash Totem, your Spirit Wolves, and I'm an Orc, so I am also going to be casting Blood Fury. Now, the macro I have here is I'm going to first be casting Blood Fury, then I'll be casting Ascendance, then I'll be casting Feral Spirits. 
The good thing about Blood Fear and Feral Spirits is neither cost a global cooldown. So you can use them in the middle of a rotation if you'd like. That's why I moved them into one macro, just to make everything quicker. As you can see here, whoa, we don't want that. As you can see here, I have it, if I click here, it's going to cast everything in one shot. It's going to put everything on cooldown at once, which is perfectly fine. Um, it just makes it so it's one less button to click and everything is more uniformed. Because Blood Fury and Spirit Wolves are both on a two minute cooldown. Um, that way it just keeps them, you know, intact more. Your Ascendance, however, is on a three minute cooldown. Now, on longer fights, you generally want to use all three abilities at the same time just for more of that DPS. However, most abilities you're not going to get a chance to cast, or excuse me, most times you don't want to wait that extra minute because you want your DPS to be stabilized throughout. And since fights do last generally six minutes, you are going to have a chance to cast them in sync with each other twice. Um, so, you know, if you use them all once, they're going to go on cooldown. You're going to use this again. You're going to use your Blood Fury and your Wolves are then going to come out. While this is still on a minute, then you're going to use Ascendance. And then that third time it comes around, that is when all three are going to be in uniform sync. All their cooldowns are going to be the same. And that's when you're going to really bomb some damage. Um, so that's generally how it's going to go. I definitely suggest macroing Ascendance with your Feral Spirits. There's no reason not to. Um, I guess in case you don't want them together for any case... Um, or if, if you want to keep them separate, keep them on your bars separately. Um, I do have them here separate just in case I don't want to cast both at the same time. Um, or if I need to cast something at a certain time, then that's when I'm going to be doing that. You also generally, with your Feral Spirits, you... Because I believe they do take part of your attack power when they cast, which is why I do Blood Fury beforehand. And you can wait for a Trinket proc to cast everything at once to blow up some serious damage. So play around with it a little bit. Um... Other than that, I believe that's going to be all of our rotation and everything. Um, Bloodlust, you don't really have to worry about Bloodlust. And Magma Totem, that's for AoE. This is single target, D uh, single target DPS. I probably should have went over this in the beginning. Um, but you're not going to be using Chain Lightning. You're not going to be using Magma Totem at all. Um, as for defensive cooldowns, we have Shamanistic Rage. We have our Stone Bulwark Totem or our Astral Shift, whichever you chose. And we also have our healing stream and our healing one which is ancestral guidance which is the one I choose use them whenever you need them you know if the raid needs to blow a cooldown you're gonna blow a cooldown they'll all you'll always have at least one up so you should be good to go to be honest in hand shaman should be the last to die at almost all times unless of course they get targeted by the boss um, but that's gonna be just about it when it comes to rotation so once again to recap we're going to have our searing flames totem or our fire elemental then we're going to have an unleashed elements flame shock which is going to be kept up at all times. Then we're going to have Storm Strike, five Searing Flames Lava Lash, Instant Cast Lightning Bolt, Earth Shock Fire Nova as fillers, and then based on procs as it's going to go, that's for you to decide which you're going to use first. Lightning Bolt either at three or four stacks if your Storm Strike is still on cooldown, uh, Lava Lash, or st yes, um, Lava Lash or Lightning Bolt if you have both. Um, five stacks Maelstrom and five stacks Searing Flames. It's up to you which one you're going to want to use first. Personally, I would use Lightning Bolt. Um, it's only a 0.5. Ooh, phone. It's only a 0.5 second, so it's not too bad. Excuse me. And from there, that's going to be it. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Mike out.